my window, looked out, and I saw this ginormous fireball. Now at six, fire rips through this Wilsonville apartment complex, leaving neighbors with nowhere to turn. This morning, we're hearing how one man jumped into action to make sure everyone got out safely. Police say the teen behind this deadly crash near Sherwood wasn't legally allowed to drive. Today, he'll make his first court appearance. Plus. That's everything and more. I mean, I'm so happy that we're here, and it's just great to have all the confetti, have all our families here. Oh, what a feeling. The Oregon Ducks are going to the Final Four. More from their historic win in front of a wild crowd at Moda Center. It's been very bittersweet. I, I think the, the whole cast, we're actually not taking one moment for granted on that stage. The Big Bang Theory's Kaylee Cuoco is gearing up for the series' final season. We had a chance to catch up with the actress about how she's preparing to say goodbye to the show and the other big project she has in the works. KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. And let's start with this live look, shall we, of downtown Portland by way of our Rose City Sky Cam. This is April Fool's Day. April the 1st, <laughs> we say good morning to you and thanks for waking up with us on this Monday. Yes, good morning. We have Nina Melhoff with your headlines coming up in a minute. We have Lacey on traffic duty and Rod's on a little Rod's spring a break, break. Yeah. vacation, so you're in uh, weather duty. So we're talking about rain. The rain is back. <laughs> it's back in the forecast. Yeah, we're dry out there right now in the metro area, but I wanted to show you the radar because there is rain falling across some parts of our viewing area right now. We've got rain in Newport, light rain in Eugene and Corvallis. Salem, you are next in line to get a little wet. So as we check out the bus stop forecast, I think in the Portland metro area, we're dry for the morning commute, but uh, rain, at least light rain, moving in by lunchtime, and we'll finish the day in the lower 60s, a far cry from that warmth that we enjoyed yesterday. Lacey? Well, good news, Chris. ODOT did pick up those cones that were blocking the left lane on I-84 inbound, but you are still jammed all the way back almost to 80 seconds, so really slow going here on I-84 westbound. Hopefully that flushes out pretty soon. We're also starting to see some traffic on I-5 southbound between Mill Plain and the Interstate Bridge, not impacting your drive time too much, but you can see the big problem right here is I-84 inbound, about 25 minutes coming in from Troutdale. Brenda? Thank you, Lacey. It's two minutes after the hour. The teenager arrested after a deadly crash near Sher Sherwood will be arraigned this afternoon. 18-year-old Roger Baird faces multiple charges. Deputies think he was driving drunk and high when he crashed Saturday afternoon. This happened on Highway 99. Deputies say Baird was leaving a parking lot when he hit a pickup truck, causing that truck to roll several times. The driver of the pickup was taken to the hospital but the passenger, 47-year-old Lorraine Wheeler, died. We talked to one of Wheeler's friends who says she was a wife, mother, and beloved friend. She uh, was really loving. She was one of those people that would give you the shirt off her back if you needed it. She was taken way too early. Deputies say Baird's license is suspended because of a separate hit and run about two months ago. Officials say Baird pleaded guilty to the charges in that case and is currently on probation. It is 6.03 this morning. We're getting a look at new video of a massive fire in Wilsonville that left multiple families without homes. People could see those flames and plumes of smoke from miles away. Incredibly, nobody was hurt. The fire started at a construction site in the Villabois community around 1 a.m. on Sunday. The flames spread to nearby condos while many people were sleeping. Neighbors are crediting this man seen in surveillance video who was running door to door in a robe to wake people up. Everybody was really lucky that he actually went around and knocked on, on the doors and all that and was running around in his bathrobe with nothing on, on underneath. So thank God for him. So I really appreciate him. I really do. Well, the fire burned 20 homes, 14 vehicles and a couple street lamps. Investigators are trying to figure out now what caused the fire. 604 the time right now. A woman is in jail this morning accused of pointing a fake gun at security guards in a crowded area near the Portland Saturday market. So this happened yesterday afternoon. Police say the suspect, 32 year old Joel Bostic, was initially uncooperative, but officers were able to arrest her near the intersection of 2nd and West Burnside. Officers say they found a realistic looking BB gun in her bag. If you live in Salem, get ready to say goodbye to plastic bags. The city's ban goes into effect today. That means shoppers will need to bring their own reusable bags or buy a paper one for five cents at checkout. 
Low-income customers can get free bags if they show an Oregon Trail card. Portland and Eugene already have bans on plastic bags. The Oregon legislature is also considering a statewide ban. And looking ahead, Oregon's next Secretary of State is expected to be sworn into office this week. Last Friday, Governor Kate Brown appointed Bev Clarno to the office left open after Dennis Richardson's passing in February. Clarno served as Speaker of the Oregon House in the mid-90s and was the Senate Republican leader in 2003. She was also the director for the Northwest Region of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 605, time for your morning rush. I'm Nina Melhoff, breaking down the top stories across the country. Family and friends gather to remember a woman who was killed after getting in a car that she thought was her Uber. A vigil was held last night at the University of South Carolina, where 21 year old Samantha Josephson was a student. Police say the driver of that car, Nathaniel Rowland, abducted and later killed her. She was last seen alive Friday, just after 2 a.m. outside of a bar. Her body was found Friday afternoon. Lawyer Michael Avenatti will be back in court today where he's facing fraud charges. He's accused of fraudulently getting $4 million in bank loans, then pocketing $1.6 million that should have gone to his client. Avenatti probably best known for representing adult film star Stormy Daniels in her legal battle against the president. Vice President Joe Biden talking about that allegation that he inappropriately kissed a woman in 2014. Now, the accusation was published late last week in New York Magazine. Lucy Flores, a Democratic nominee for Nevada Lieutenant Governor at the time, says he approached her from behind and kissed her on the back of the head. Over the weekend, President Trump moved to cut direct aid to El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras. Many citizens flee in those countries to come here. The president also told reporters he'll close the southern border this week if Mexico doesn't immediately stop illegal immigration. And a quick update on that technical outage causing flight delays nationwide. Several airlines are saying that the flight planning software that five airlines use that had gone down, it's back up and running right now. There are residual delays as things catch up. Portland International has about six outgoing flights delayed by at least a half hour. Two have been canceled. That is your morning rush. Back to you guys. All right, Nina, thanks a lot. Last hour, Nina told us about the Blazers. Playoff tickets for the Blazers going on sale today. Right now, though, we're going to talk about college hoops. We have some big March Madness news for those Oregon Ducks. The women are in the NCAA Final Four for the very first time again, Ashley. This is their first Final Four appearance. Fans are just going nuts this morning. Christine Pitawanich is live at the Duck Store downtown. And Christine, such exciting news. Yeah, good morning, Ashley, Drew, and Ducks basketball fans have a lot to be excited about this morning. The ladies team pulled off a big win at the Moda Center last night, and you can bet the Ducks stores in our area are going to be selling a whole lot of gear this week. At the Moda Center last night, though, there were more than 11,500 fans cheering them on. Of course, many of them there for the Ducks women's team. Guard Saprina Ionescu set the tone throughout the game with 31 points, eight assists, and seven rebounds. The second seeded Ducks got a big win against top seeded Mississippi State. Final score 88 to 84 and fans as well as players are stoked. Yes! Go Ducks! Go Ducks! Go Ducks! Go Ducks! That's everything and more. I mean I'm so happy that we're here and it's just great to have all the confetti, have all our families here. We're battle tested. We're ready. I wouldn't be surprised to see him make a run to the championship. Heck yes, let's hope so. Today, Baylor and Iowa will play at 4 p.m. The Ducks will face off against the winner of that game on Friday in Tampa, Florida. Back to you. Unbelievable. Go <laughs> Ducks. Yes. I love that. Watching basketball this week.